there's nothing uh nothing confidential up on my whiteboards what's up guys um hopefully you can hear me i think this is good i flippy flopped around my room so now i'm in the corner got my light got my whiteboards got my water life is good um who's all who's all here right now who is hanging out with me in the uh i started premiering what's up jacob I started premiering all my videos that I uh, that I post so that I can like hang out, watch it with you guys, and like talk for a little bit. Cause that's so much fun uh, hanging out with you guys. I think it's sick. Uh, Asher, what's up, man? Jacob, are you the one on Instagram that that got hurt from Japan? Yo, you guys make me feel so special. This is fun. What kind of energy drinks do you guys drink in Japan? Ah, oh, dude, that's the worst. I did like, I have a friend here who, he tore his ACL and his meniscus, and, and then he like didn't let it recover. They got it, hurt it again, and then he waited a year, got back on the bike, and then he tore his other ACL and meniscus. Um, but now he's back riding, so like things are looking up, man. Stay positive. All right, Asher, I am looking for a pro grade BMX that's indestructible. On my Kink Gap XL, I bent the forks and the front axle by grinding. If we replace both of those, it will exceed the price we bought for it. Yeah, so that's um, that's usually the issue with with beginner bikes. Um, a lot of them are designed so that you're able to upgrade the parts you break and like ultimately build a fully custom bike. So for example, I think the first bike that I was able to go fully custom was an Eastern Trail Digger. And the, the way it went is like everything that I broke on it, I just bought something new and slowly replaced it. So then it was fully custom. Um, and I get what you're saying about that being expensive because my fully custom bike uh, cost me probably $1,800 or something. Like good quality BMX bikes are going to be super expensive. Um, your best bet, Asher, is either to upgrade the wheel. Let's see. Yeah, so like forks would probably be 130 bucks, And then the wheel is going to be... I don't know, probably another 150. So I just had somebody's dad email me and he's looking for a bike for his kid because he said his kid literally destroys every bike uh, that he gets him, every single bike. So I sent him over. Oh, is that your dad? Yeah. So so I sent him some info about the uh, Asher. What's Do you have an Instagram? I want to check out your riding. Sounds like you you go pretty hard. You're only 12, right? That's crazy, man. Ah, um, oh, all right. Well, when you're good enough and old enough, you'll have Instagram, and I'll follow you. But so so here's the thing. I was gonna reply to your dad about the uh, the sound wave. Okay, the thing. I think the battleship would be a good fit for you, or the the we the people envy. And here's why I don't necessarily think the sound wave would be perfect. Just because if you look at like Gary Young's riding, it's really um, go fast, go high. Uh, and so the geometry around that is built to do really good in dirt, do really good in park, and then do okay in street. Um, it has like a longer chain stay, which where you're at right now, it's going to be harder for you to like pick up and stuff like that. And then it's just got some, some different bigger geometry that's not necessarily super street focused. Um, so, so yeah, that's why I was going with the envy. I'll send him an email a little bit later and explain that more all in all though, this, the sound wave is a really high quality bike. Um, I just think from, from what I read on the email and like the way that you ride, it sounds like something like the envy or the battleship. That's a little more responsive would be a, a better fit for you, but that's why. Bring the heat. You guys drink Monster in Japan. Oh, okay, so, so you're American. You're just over in Japan. Um, that's awesome, though, man. Thanks. Uh, is it is it that bad? It looks like you get some time to hang out, though. So that's cool.
What bike are you building up, Jacob? What's the what's the last part that you bought for your bike before you got hurt? Uh, check out your YouTube, Asher. You like the R32 forks? I had, I was riding like 26 millimeter forks and then I broke them. And so I'm riding my friend's R32s right now. And uh, it was crazy the difference. Like the 32s, the steering felt a lot slower. And it's crazy how much of a difference, like going from like Jared's 15s to R32s, it's, it's wild. Asher Berg. All right, Asher, I'm going to subscribe, but you better post some uh, some good stuff. Yeah, Asher's dad in the email was like, "We want we want something like 18 millimeter because he likes to to go up on the front wheel," and I've never ridden anything steeper than 25. But it's like when our Odyssey came out with the R15s, it sounds like something super steep. Like like that's the new form of BMX. All the newer school riders are going to those really steep forks. They have a skate park on base. All right. <laughs> Dude, that's awesome. So I live in I live in Las Cruces and uh, we're like we're an hour away from the Fort Bliss base. And I, I'll just be hanging out at the park and then I'll meet some different guys to uh, that are stationed there and they're like, oh man, I haven't rode since high school. But we're stationed here so so they'll go out and they'll buy a bike and like we'll become like really good friends and then they'll go off to to i don't know canada or egypt or wherever they go get stationed um but that's super cool like i see so many people in the military and uh people in the military go out and and get back into bmx it's it's so cool man there's a guy from somewhere in japan named rim uh, he's a pro guy. He was he stayed in my cabin at Woodward, and dude, this guy's like 360 triple bars. He's so good, and I think he's only 18. So maybe hanging out around there, you'll learn some some Japanese secrets at BMX. And if you do, let me know because I'm curious. Laura Suskin, how do I convince my parents to let me buy a bike with my own money? They don't support it. Oh man, that sounds rough. Um, I, I recognize this name. I feel like I've gotten an email or seen you on YouTube or something. Um, let's see. So maybe the best thing to do if your parents don't let you spend your own money is uh, run away from, no, I'm just kidding. Don't do that. Don't run away from home. <laughs> um, you gotta listen to your parents regardless so there's a comment from a guy I got earlier, uh, probably in the last video, but he said that his parents never supported him riding bikes. And so he was never really able to. And then he finally is like old enough. He moved out. He has his own job. And now he's saving up money so that he can get his dream bike and finally get into BMX. So, I mean, while that's not ideal, um, you'll ultimately be able to do whatever you want later on so just like just be patient enjoy what you have especially if your parents are gonna buy you a bike then uh yeah then that's good you don't need to spend any money zolzer hey i've been riding a contender frame for the last while it's a 20.7 5 inch top tube 13.25 inch chainstay i was thinking of switching to a new frame with 12.5 Mostly interested in street and park and thinking about a 21 inch top two, your 511. Um, so Joel, what kind of riding do you like to do? Like when you think about your idols, is it more like, 
like Logan Martin, Harry Maine, um, Brandon Lupos, that kind of riding, or is it more like like Chase Hawk, Corey Walsh, uh, Larry Edgar, where those guys just go super fast, go super high, and, and are real stylish? So like there's there's two things there is that either the really stylish flowy type riding or the really technical type. And then that really is going to steer which way you go when you're looking at different specs. Yeah. So, so for the Nathan Williams and the Jacob cable um, type of riding, you're, you're going to, the 12.75 is going to feel a lot better. Um, that's kind of the stuff that they're riding the steeper offset forks because they're real technical and uh, snappy. So yeah, 12 point, going to 12.5 would be fine because where your wheel's at, if it's not slammed, it'll probably be around 12.7, which is really responsive. You're gonna notice like manuals are gonna pick up like crazy and uh, it's gonna feel, it's gonna feel really different at first, but 360s, like that kind of thing, like spinning out of grinds, it's gonna be a lot easier with that. And then um, where you're at, 12.75 is going to be like borderline small. So a 21 inch probably will feel pretty good going up to that. Um, I'm 6'4", so I'm like like five inches taller than you. And for, for a small period of time, uh, I hurt my knee. I put on a 20.7 inch top tube frame. And I was like, maybe I can triple whip. And switching to that was like really weird because I could not control the bike i couldn't like air very high i had a hard time doing a lot of those kinds of tricks and um so so when i went back to a 21 i was like oh my god this is this is crazy so for you going up to a 21 inch you're probably going to have a lot of um you're, you're going to feel a lot more comfortable on the bike if that makes any sense so i definitely recommend i think that's a good idea if you go with the 21 and then the 12 point what was it 12.5 chain stay and uh yeah dude tag me in some stuff on instagram i want to see what kind of tricks you're doing what are you talking about jared who's gonna take you to death jared says be careful they definitely take you to death are you talking about japan Jacob says Rim is such an inspiration. Yeah, it's for his age, like a lot of younger riders like that, they they have big tricks, but the style isn't really there. Like it's not very pieced together and it just kind of looks sloppy. But for Rim, it's a uh, he actually has the style with the tricks. It's insane. Here, I'm gonna play something from him. Um, he put up a little street Instagram edit. And I thought, dang, this guy can even ride street too. Here, maybe you guys can see this. I don't know. It's is it backwards? All right, hold on. Look at that. This kid's like eight. That's crazy. Seventeen, maybe. I don't know. Jacob, correct me if I'm wrong. Look at street riding too. What? Anyway. So that's what you guys have to look forward to in Japan. Um, Jacob, you're six one and you're riding a twenty point five, dude. Yeah, get get like a twenty one. That would you're crazy. I mean, you could probably control it really easily. You'll notice that it's easier to learn certain tricks with the short top tube, but like, the, yeah, the control isn't there, and that's a huge piece of like having the riding stylish. Guys, I, before I even did this live, I had seven people that already liked it and were like waiting to come hang out. Really appreciate it. This is fun. Steep forks, you'll be like this awesome. And then you'll be like, oh, yeah. Um, when I switched over, what was it? I just recently, maybe, uh, not recently, like last year, I started playing with nose manuals and, uh, it was weird because to learn a nose manual, you're going to flip over the bars a million times, two million times. You're just going to crash. And then eventually you'll find like a balance point right before you get to that flip over point. You'll, you'll shift your hips back and you'll hold it. Uh, but it took so long doing that. And like when I switched the forks around, 
that didn't happen as much because like I said, I went to those longer 32 millimeter and uh, it didn't happen as much, but then it's a lot harder to lock into that balance point. Asher says, is all wax the same? Um, honestly, I don't know. I'd never used wax before. When I'd grind, I'd just go faster. Um, my friends use wax, so if I'm out riding with them, it's definitely nice to have the have the ledge waxed up. But one thing, if you guys are, are wild, um, got that entrepreneurial mindset, I know of a guy in El Paso um, that sells wax. So he's a scooter kid. He's he's really um, interesting. He's, he talks a lot, and he's, he's kind of good. He's fun. But he started making his own wax. So what he did is he got ice cube trays, candles, and then he, like, melted the candles, put in, like, olive oil, a butter maybe. I don't know. He put in all this stuff. And then he let it sit and harden and they're just little cubes and everyone calls them melon wax, but he sells them. So like a bag of wax is five bucks or something like that. I don't know. Figure it out so that you're actually making money. But if you guys are real creative like that, you could start doing that and make some extra money to buy bike parts. Smarts got to be smart. All right. Rims 19. Okay. Okay. Groove Cow says, I'm five foot four and I want to know if the cult control is worth buying. I'm not really new. I can do a few tricks. So should I get this? Um, the cult, can, I don't know. Honestly, I like cult as a brand, but their 2021 line was kind of disappointing to me. And what I mean by that is that like the control isn't that great. And then the devotion is their top line and it's pretty good. But after that, it's really limited. Um, especially because the devotion is only a 21 inch top tube. So if you're 5'4, you probably want something like a 20.5 or a 20.75. And you just have to look at something like that. I don't think the Colt would be good for you, uh, especially if you've already been riding for a little bit. You should get something with a little higher quality. Like the, like the Kink Switch would probably be good. It's going to be a little more than the Control, but it has a full Kamali double wall rims and and a free coaster if you're into that but if you yeah, if you know so like the cult control would be good for a beginner who's still learning tricks but not necessarily someone who's already doing tricks because then you're going to be in asher's boat where you're breaking the bike all the time no bueno joel says will it be hard to air and ride transition with a short chain stay yes and no um it's going to loop out a lot easier I did a video talking about chainstay. Um, it's in like the BMX spec, BMX spec section. And uh, it's, it's going to make you loop out more and you're not going to have as much control. So you're going to have to find a fine balance with it. But what you can do with that is that if it's 12.5 slammed, I was, hold up. I was drawing this for the last live. So this this doesn't look like a that's your chain stay where your where your wheel goes on okay and this is slammed so that's 12.75 but if you add an extra link to your chain and you put your wheel on so that it's clamps on out there uh, that that'll probably add half an inch to maybe even a full inch and that way you'd be you you'd be able to play with it more to see what feels better. So you can put it all the way at the back and then you'd technically be at like a 12.9 or 13 inch chain stay. And you can see if you like that better. Um, it's not gonna affect you that much, I don't think, especially the trade out for how much easier spins are gonna be. I think you'll like it more if that makes any sense. Yeah, Jacob, if you're riding a 20.5, um where your where your stem and everything is is like half an inch closer than it would be with the 21 so when you're doing bar spins your bars are are that much closer to your knee so then you're really gonna have to pinch and lean back extra so that you don't hit your knee um so getting a bigger top tube will definitely feel better the other thing you guys it with bar spins 
keep in mind that the standover height, so that's how tall your seat tube is, um, like a taller standover makes bar spins easier because your seat's higher up, you can pinch it a lot easier and like hold the bike steady while your hands are off. You could like do this in the air, I guess. Um, but, but, but the trade off there is that it makes whips harder. So you, I don't know. Well, a lot of people ride like an 8.75 inch standover because it balances it. Um, I, that total frame I had was a 7.75. It was really low, but like no handers and bar spins were so hard, but double whips, so easy. So I, I don't know. You just have, it depends on your riding, like what kind of style you want to do. Asher flips over the bars all the time because he's a nose manual god. Jacob says, milk candles, veggie oil in a mold, and you got some good wax. Jacob, you should try and sell some while you're hurt. Hustle the wax. Send me some. I'll, I'll put it put it on the channel. Joel, what shoes do you recommend? Bruised my foot heel twice in a few months. This last time had me off the bike for a week so far. Um, so that's crazy that you say that because I actually bruised this heel. It's been like a month now, and I still like I'm hitting it on the floor and it hurts. Um, Dude, bruised heels are the absolute worst. I ride in Nike SB shoes just with the general sole. Um, but this is my second heel bruise in the last couple months. And I'm going to, the last time I had this happen a lot, I went to Walmart and I got Dr. Scholl's. Um, God, I, I think they were for runners, but they were insoles for runners. And they had a nice thick gel, gel, uh, cushion on the heel so i put those and they're like 20 bucks but that's what i did and then overall it helped um because if, if you're landing a lot and you're probably pretty tall too right who is that joel yeah um but yeah if you're landing like that on your heel one you get you get off the bike like you're saying like i'm saying and so so a 20 dollar investment there is super yeah you're almost six foot um it's super worth it. Which ones are you talking about, though? The FP. Footprint Game Changers. Interesting. So I've seen some things where you can just get, like, just heel inserts, too. And maybe that would be worth it. I'm not sure. I'm going to save this page and check out these FP insoles. Oh, so they shape to the foot. Yeah, that's interesting. I bet they're super expensive, but maybe they're worth it. Yeah, put the link in here so everyone can check it out. Um, but yeah, shoe-wise, shoe, shoe wise, I don't know. I, I definitely think Vans are some of the best, especially for the grip. But I hate how they're low cut, and the current ankle or the current shin guards I have don't have ankle protectors. So the SBs cover my ankles, and that's why I'm riding those. But... The Nike grip on the pedals is awful. Um, some people ride Yeezys, I guess. If you want to get real crazy, you could get some Yeezys and ride in them. Asher says, what do you think about the We The People reason? See, so the reason has those short cranks and the 12.75 inch chainstay, which is why, same as the Battleship like that I recommended for you, um, it's the 15 millimeter forks. So it's just a really responsive street bike. Uh, let's see. It's not going to be near as good as, uh, as like those pro level with the people bikes. I was talking to your dad in that email I sent, I put in that they have, uh, so like the main difference in like a $600 complete bike and a thousand dollar pro pro level complete is that the aftermarket parts have a whole different level of quality. So like they do things like flash welding, which immediately heats up the, the weld so that it doesn't like ruin all the metal around it. They use Senko chromoly, which is a higher grade chromoly. They use heat treating on it so that it doesn't bend as easily, so that it doesn't crack as easily. They put internal gussets like Sunday, for example, and external gussets. They do double budding, so it's thicker at the spots where it welds. 
like all those things go into those really expensive aftermarket parts like that I would ride because they hold up on a whole different level. So uh, let's say let's say the kink switch, for example, is a full Kamali frame. OK, and that's great. But the thing is, like, it might not have all the gussets. It might not be double butted. It might not be heat treated. So when you look at the frame on a $500 kink switch versus a $450 uh, Sunday Soundwave frame. That's going to be, that's the difference right there is that that frame has so many different aspects of high quality that go into it. Um, and so when you're looking at like bikes like the Reason, overall it's a high quality, but it's not like a pro quality, if that makes any sense. Now, the bikes, I'm not sure what kind of bikes you guys, um, like you've been breaking, Asher. But if they're like three, four hundred dollar bikes that aren't full Kermali, all that stuff, going up to a reason might be a pretty solid step for you. And it might be worth testing that out to see if you need um, it's to see if you really need like a thousand dollar bike. Yeah. So. So if you're riding two hundred and fifty dollar bikes, then it would step up to. Uh, getting a six hundred dollar bike would add. Full Kamali, which you probably didn't have before. Double wall rims, which you probably didn't have before. Um, fully sealed bearings and stuff like that. And then it's just not going to have those other aspects that I talked about. Um, so I don't know. If, if your dad's down to spend $1,200 on a bike, like go for it. Because that bike will literally last you forever. You might have to upgrade some parts here and there. Because uh, every, you know, wheels break, spokes break. It, it just happens. But if, if he's down to do that, it'll save you a lot of money in the long run, definitely. Um, otherwise, the reason would be a really solid upgrade. But the other thing is re the reason uses salt parts, which are lower quality e-claw parts. Um, it's like Kink makes Mission parts, and that's their lower quality brand. Um, so they're technically aftermarket parts, but they're not like they're not at that same level of quality. Hmm. I don't think it's a, I don't think it's a free coaster either. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's a free coaster. So yeah. Anyway. Those are the ones I ordered. The most. Awesome. Thanks Joel. I definitely, uh, I'll definitely check that out. Cause yeah, dude, this heel bruise, like, like I rode, I heard it. I took off two weeks. I went back, I was riding, my friends are like, let's try decades. And I'm like, oh yeah, let's try decades. So then we, uh, we were trying decades and I smacked my heel again. And I said, well, that was a bad idea. <laughs> but um, Asher, it's your money. Oh man. See, now this is where it gets harder because it's your own money. Um, I think... That's tough because I want to say, sure, you could go ahead and get the uh, the We The People Reason. And it, it'll it probably last you if you're breaking those those $250 bikes like that. It it should last you up to a year. I'm trying to think of – it wasn't uh, Elias. It was a different guy that, that always comments on my stuff um, that had like – he had a $600 Sabrosa Malum, and he broke the bars which that shouldn't, honestly, that shouldn't happen on a $600 bike. But with the mass produced type stuff, it does happen. So I don't know, man. I, I want to say go ahead and get the reason, but then I don't want it to actually break on you. And I can say 100% for sure, if you get that really expensive bike, it's going to outlast the reason for sure. All right, Elias says, our drop's harder with a short chain stay. No, not particularly. It's kind of all the same. You just have to time out when you're pulling up. Um, with the shorter chain stay, it's a different, like, different balance point, different leverage, different loop point. So the timing's going to be different, but I wouldn't necessarily say it's harder. It's just something you have to get used to. Asher has a lawn business. Oh, man, you don't even need wax if you've got a, a lawn business. That's sick, man. Good job. 
dark wave frame. It's a little more street orientated. Jared, I haven't, let's see. I know they just came out. I just reviewed the dark wave forks. Um, I don't think I've looked at the frame. Oh yeah, this is the same color as his, um, what's it called? His forecaster bike. And I like that it comes in a 21.25 inch top tube. I think my next, next frame I get, I'm going to get something long like that. Doesn't say the weight here. I mean, all in all, Sunday's frames, I'm pretty sure they all have a warranty with them because Sunday makes them. Um, they're made here. I was looking at, I found the company's Instagram that actually makes them and they have all these really cool posts of like all the frames hanging up, um, getting ready to be painted and stuff. And it's really cool. But all in all, they put so much extra quality into their, their aftermarket frames that it, it blows me away honestly <laughs> jacob i quit making tiktoks because i haven't been riding i need to make more how to's um i know that's sad but uh then i was going through and deleting stuff on my phone because i had low storage i deleted tiktok i haven't downloaded it again yet but um but i need to eventually i will once i get once i ride more and i can make more how to's I've started, you probably noticed, I, I took all my like somewhat popular TikToks and I put them on YouTube as YouTube shorts because uh, the channel I followed told me to do that. And some of those shorts are like blowing up. They've gotten, that's a big reason why I got a thousand subs already was from those shorts. Um, but guys, look real quick. This is the craziest thing that you guys are ever going to learn if you want to like get good on social media okay here's a story back way back in the day like 2014 maybe 2013 uh this thing called instagram came out and i got it obviously because i was in high school and i was like this is cool and i had instagram post some bmx pictures i wasn't that good i could probably tail whip and stuff but i wasn't like super good and i had a few hundred followers like that it was really quick and then I told my friend, Barrick, I always bring this up to him. I said, yo, like you should get an Instagram. It's really cool. He said, no, you know, how much does a hipster weigh? And I'm like, what? And he's like, an Instagram. Like he's making fun of me for having Instagram uh, because Facebook was cool and Instagram was not cool. And I said, whatever. So I deleted Instagram, right? I let him make me sad and I deleted Instagram. So all those followers I had gone. And then, and then like, six months or a year later he has instagram everyone in their mom has instagram and i deleted that account and i was so mad about it because here's the thing this is what happened with tiktok so i got on tiktok when there was an influx of people viewing content and not many people creating content and what that causes is the app has to show people content so if there's more people viewing content than there is creating content, your content's going to get exposed a lot easier. Um, so, so like right now, Instagram, Instagram doesn't need to show your content to anybody. There's so many people trying to be Instagram influencers. There's so many people creating content for Instagram that that's why you're having a really hard time growing organically. Instagram wants you to spend money on advertising to grow your account, and that's how they make money. So when TikTok came out, there wasn't advertising and there wasn't a lot of people creating content. So I started creating content, and like, you know, within a six months or so, we got 30,000 followers. It's crazy. And so now, now TikTok's blown up. Okay. Everyone's trying to get on that TikTok creator fund, everyone's trying to get big on TikTok. And so what that did is it stopped that influx. So it's a lot harder to grow organically on TikTok because everyone moved there. So, so that happened with Instagram, right? And instead of staying with it, I jumped off because Barrick made fun of me. TikTok, I jumped on it, okay, stayed with it, and it, it's been really good to me. Now, here's the thing right now, YouTube Shorts is YouTube's way of competing with TikTok. 
And that's why I put those 30 shorts to go out with within a month and just to kind of go out. And that's why like one of them has 30,000 views right now and it's only been a week. So guys, the biggest thing I can tell you is this isn't necessarily BMX related, but this is life related. There's going to be things that are new and a lot of people are going to make fun of it. They're going to, they're going to not be down for it. Okay. And, and some of it's not going to work. You could go on there and uh, make some content like, like IGTV. I thought that would be a really huge thing. And it's, it's not picking up yet. Everyone likes that, that short TikTok content. Now it might be later, but it's not right now. Um, but you guys, if you jump on it and you're an early adopter, then you guys are going to have so much easier time growing your social media, getting exposure. Because when you have more followers right now, that's all that matters to brands. They want to get that exposure. So if you guys want to get sponsored long term, you need to focus on growing those different social medias. Rant over. Um, but yeah, that's crazy. So after TikTok right now, YouTube Shorts, there's going to be a new app that comes out and it's going to be the same thing. You either jump on it or you don't. So keep that in mind. And then the other thing, people want to learn. So while I'm ranting on about growing your social media, people want to learn. So, so Asher could probably do very well on YouTube teaching about how he started his lawn business and stuff like that. So keep that in mind, okay? Kumu, I was looking at the We The People Reason, but apparently it has single wall front rim. Should this be a deciding factor? The short answer, no, I wouldn't say so. Just because your front rim doesn't take very much abuse. Um, a lot of guys put on really, um, really light, really not that strong front wheels, and they're riding at a pro level. Now, your back wheel takes up a ton of impact. So when you're doing big 360s, all that pressure is going down on the back wheel. And that's why it's so important to have a double wall back rim. But a front rim, I wouldn't say to make that a huge deciding factor. Although I always recommend like double wall rims are the way to go. Um, if it does break, it's not going to cost you very much to replace um, in, the, in the general scheme of things. So no, I wouldn't say that that's a huge deciding factor. Salvador Blanco, Sunday Soundwave Complete BMX Alternative Competitors. We were just talking about this earlier. Um, there's really not many bikes on that level. The only one I can really think of is going to be the uh, the Sabrosa. What is it? Novus. The Sabrosa Novus. So the Trey Jones signature and the Matt Ray signature. They're pretty close. Um, but still not quite there just because the Sunday has those parts that they give you a warranty on. And that's going to be super nice to have that warranty later on when you break something. Um, but then the, the only other ones guys are, um, the, we, the people revolver battleship and envy. So the envy is like probably the highest quality bike out right now. Uh, and the revolver is a more well-rounded one and the battleship's a little more street focused, but those also have lifetime warranty on the frame and the forks and uh, full aftermarket e-claw parts. So those would be the competitors. Uh, okay, I'll, I'll get TikTok again and I'll make, <laughs> I, I'm gonna do how to like, like the how to change your grip video blew up on TikTok and on here. And so I'm like, oh, I'll make a just a bunch of real quick how to's like working on your bike and whatnot. Jared, I'm glad they make another wave tubing frame. I think it should be a Sunday standard on custom frames. That wave tube, I saw it in uh, I can't remember whose bike it was. It was one of my friends, but um, it's really weird to me, but I've never seen an issue. So they must be doing something right. Sunday is interesting. They they engineer a bunch of different things. Have you guys seen that video of Sundays? Um, it's them testing the R series forks. Like they clamp it into this thing and then put a bunch of pressure on it. It's crazy. Strong stuff. Strong stuff. Jacob says, I remember when TikTok came out, I wanted to make BMX videos there, but TikTok was released a week after I started and nobody would watch my stuff. 
Yeah. So there's a thing. It's when when preparation meets opportunity, and uh, you just hadn't been riding long enough, so you didn't have that that preparation. Now, I think if you keep riding in like four or five years, like that next thing I'm talking about is going to come out. You're going to be pro, and uh, you're going to take advantage of it. You'll be like, oh, I remember that one time in that live. Douglas was talking about it, and boom. I hope so. Then you remember me when you're famous, Jacob. Okay. Graybeard Wolf, what's up? I, I shouted you out in uh, in my last video. I I always pick like a couple people at every video and shout them out. So you were you were the shouts out. This is Graybeard Wolf, everybody. He wants to learn nose manuals. Does handlebar height have any effect on difficulty? If so, how so? So, do you like work on cars at all? Maybe. Um, I worked in a tire shop and we had like semi tires and it was, it was the worst, but if you get a ratchet that's this long, okay. And you try and, and loosen even bike wheel, you try and loosen bike wheel. If a really short ratchet, it's going to be really hard to break it loose. But if you get a really long ratchet, you have a lot of leverage and you can break it loose. So that's exactly how your handlebars work. So taller bars equal more leverage. Therefore, it's easier to pull back, it's easier to push forward. So with that taller leverage, you're gonna be able to leverage your bike forward into nose manuals a lot easier. But here's the thing, there's a point where it goes with your height and, and the handlebar height. Because if you're riding with your bars all the way up here, that leverage is counterproductive. And I talked, I think I talked about that in the video you commented on. But I was just thinking, I'm 6'4", and in that video, right, I was talking about taller bars, and I looked up, my bars are 8.9 inches. I ride tiny bars, but I have really long forks, so that stack height's higher, and then I have a top load stem that pushes them up a little more. Um, but I am going to get like 9.25 or 9.5 pretty soon to see how it feels. But So yeah, that's what it has to do with the difficulty. Salvador Blanco, your most popular video has 6.6. .6. Is that on TikTok, bro? You should uh, put the link in here so you can check it out. That's crazy. That video of me, uh, me, me singing. No, I'm just kidding. John Lee, hey Doug, shout out. It's fine. What do you want? You want a shout out on here? I will just type it in. John Lee. I'll follow you on Instagram if you uh, tag me in something, John. How's that? John was for the premiere on the last video. Uh, like I said, I started doing that. Whenever I post them, I set it as a premiere so that when it goes public, I can hang out and like just talk to you guys in the comments. The first one I did, <laughs> I gave everyone moderator. Like you guys see Elias has uh, the moderator thing. And that's because he was in that other video. There's three of them, and I gave them a moderator. And then I asked them, uh, I said, pancakes or waffles? <laughs> and the one kid that said pancakes lost his moderator. And he was sad. I think he uns unsubscribed after that, honestly. I feel kind of bad. I was just kidding. I gave it back to him. But, uh, but yeah, so, so that's fun. That's what happens when we premiere videos. It's fun. Come hang out. Why the we the people envy bikes? Why we the people bikes don't have free coaster, even the Envy? So some of them do have the free coaster, but I mean, it just depends on them. It's weird. A lot of bike companies are like offering left-hand drive, right-hand drive. But I think in the next couple of years, they're going to start offering free coaster or no free coaster option. If they're smart, they'll, uh, they'll do that. So what if, what if Dugster Bob, right? Like my brand around everything. So here's the, the thing I'm I'm faced with, okay? Motion things, like if you guys go to Google uh, iPhone 12, there'll be all these websites doing a review on it. And when you click their link to buy it, they're making affiliate commission. Um, and so that's what a lot of reviewers do. But with BMX, their source has an affiliate program, but they do not work with me in the US. And so like I'm sending them 600 click 600 700 clicks a month people click through my link they go to source they buy something and uh and i'm not getting any affiliate through there 
So, so essentially I'm not making any money off this, which one day, one day BMX will get to the point where I can, but I was like, what if I just started my own bike shop? And that way I just, I just directly sell the, uh, sell the products through the website. If I did that, would any of you guys buy stuff from me? Serious question. Let me know. Jared bought a new front rim today for a hundred bucks. Yeah, dude. Like I said, the the front wheels are uh, they're they're really cheap. So going with a uh, a single wall front wheel, if it does happen to break, it's not going to be the end of the world, and you'll be able to buy something new. But I don't think it'll break unless you're uh, crashing a lot. You're hey, you're welcome. What kind of what bike are you going to get, Graybeard, for? Uh, for yourself you said you you got one for your kiddo now you're looking for one for you what are you gonna what are you looking at asher for your first custom what i what i always did on my custom um i'm gonna shout out dan's comp even though i've called them 14 times to get them to do an affiliate program with me and they won't do that either <laughs> um somewhere in here hold up i'm on here maybe not they used to have a scratch and dent section. So if you go to freestyle parts and like frames, you go to scratch and dent. And uh, there, it's parts that came in like with tiny scratches or just not in 100% perfect condition. And then they would list them on there for a pretty hefty discounted price. And where I'm going with that is, is for your first custom bike. Like it's always, I, I have a lot of fun doing that. Like going through and looking at the sales slash discount stuff and then seeing what I can piece together. Because like I said, my bike was 1800 and uh, it's not cheap. So so if you're building your first one, especially with your own hard earned money, man, um, try and go that route. I don't see it on Dan's, but maybe I'm not, maybe I'm too distracted right now with the live. Um, but look around there and you can always just sort by, uh, Sort by lowest price, but look at um, uh, we the people frames. I always talk about this, but they posted on their uh, on their Instagram like just real close up, high quality pictures, and they their their frames are really solid. But I mean, so so are sound it little the so are Sundays aftermarket frames with that that what is it called the down tube type stuff. The wave, the wave, that's what it is. <laughs> he got roasted. Do you remember his name, Elias, the, the pancake guy? I was just kidding. <laughs> I feel so bad. <laughs> that was fun. Uh, I should do it to you guys. There's like, there's 10 people right now. Um, oh, well, the next premiere, I'll do something like that. <laughs> So you guys would, uh, you guys are sick. Thank you. I think it'd be just, cause here's the, like I've reached out to kink and different brands and I'm like, Hey guys, I have this website. Would you guys drop ship with me? And that's essentially where you buy the product through me. And then I send the order to like the bike company and they ship it out. Um, they do that for other bike shops, but the thing is they want you to have an actual store and I, one, I don't want to have a bike shop. I just, I don't, I like doing this online stuff. I like all this interaction. I don't like like the day-to-day -day bike shop nonsense, but that would be the only way for me to sell bikes. And uh, so I don't know, maybe that's something we'll do in the future. I'll let you guys know though, if we do that and uh, you guys, you guys would be my best supporters. I'll give you free stickers. Asher. Oh, I was totally thinking about the affiliate link thing when you helped me out. Yeah, so so all my links on my website, they're affiliate. And same with the emails I do. Um, this chain reaction too is an affiliate I'm an affiliate with, but they honestly they charge but their bikes that they sell are like a hundred dollars more than than they are from other bike shops. So I don't recommend them unless everything's out of stock. So when Kink was out of stock, uh, Chain Reaction had Kink available, but like I said, $100 more. Um, but those are the only ones in stock, so I'd go ahead and recommend them, but not very often. It's BMX is weird because they're so anti-e-commerce. like e -commerce. And I, anyone I talk to, I'm like, look, if shops 
don't get ready for like the e-commerce in the next five years like look at how big e-commerce is right now with covid and everything like i feel like that's the future in the next 10 years covid or not everyone wants to shop online everyone wants to be home have things delivered if if the bike shops don't get on with that then they're not going to be around like it's that simple you can learn everything you need to know to work on a bike online you don't need bike shops to maintenance your bikes you like I don't know. That's maybe that's just me being paranoid, but it drives me crazy that BMX is so anti online, like support local. And, and yes, I agree with that, but it's not the future. So, oh, well, rant over, rant over. Should I get metal or plastic pegs? I switched to plastic um, last year when I was riding pegs and 10 out of 10. There's, there's a huge difference when you get plastic and you start grinding. It's, it slides so much better. Um, the only bad thing is you're going to have to change out those different, uh, the sleeves every so often, not very often, but, but sometimes you'll have to change out those sleeves. Yeah. Yeah. Elias metal with plastic sleeves. Listen to him. That's, that's what I'd say. Jared says my front wheel that I had before I bought was a complete from 2018 and the bearings finally went, but it wasn't bent. Yeah, it was it uh were the bearings sealed, Jared, or were they just uh like loose ball? Either way, they definitely go out and uh dude, you got a few years out of them. The front wheels, I have a front wheel in my garage. It's a BSD hub. And god, that thing's probably 4 years old. Still spins like a charm. I've grinded on it everything. So like front wheels, man, you don't have to change them. Uh anyone give asher a recommendation on peg length i think what four and a half is uh is the medium sized option i don't think you need five inch pegs that seems like overkill to me uh, i'd go with four or four and a half because i don't know save weight bring heat free coaster broke after doing a pro hop on my new bike just put a cassette on it Japanese guy couldn't figure out how to fix it. My bike is daily, so I need it fixed. Um, if you follow me on Instagram, send me a video of what it's doing, and I'll try and help you figure it out. But I don't know much about free coasters. I know they're whack. I have a, I have a friend. He lives, like, real close, but he, he bought that revolutionary free coaster. Did you guys see that? Um, the one that's like a cassette, but then it switches to a free coaster. He got that and he, every day he takes something else apart. He bought that, that free coaster. He laced it to a wheel. He rode it for a day, decided he didn't like it. He laced his Odyssey back. And then, then yesterday he's lacing the revolutionary back to a different wheel. And anyway, he takes his bike apart, I think just because he's bored. And so he'll definitely know whatever's going on with your free coaster. It's Barrick, that guy I was telling you about with Instagram. Bike wizard. Jacob, yeah, dude, come run the shop because I have no interest in running a shop. No interest at all. I like to do the online. I'll, I'll do the online shop. You do the in-person shop. We'll uh, we'll put Empire out of business. No, just kidding. Do you guys, have you guys heard of Empire? I think they're really good, actually. They're so close to me. Like, shipping's only two days um, from Empire. And they're really... There's not many bike shops that are like true BMX. Empire is definitely one of them. I like them. Channel Start a trend. Bike shop channel loophole. So bring heat. <laughs> uh, there's stuff I'm working on. It'll be public in March. Um, but yeah, no. We're shaking. Uh, I'm going to change the BMX industry. I promise. I promise. They're, they're so closed minded right now. It's crazy. I hope none of them are watching this and like planning to kidnap me or something. <laughs> Yo, Marvin, what's up? You're in the last live, I think. Thank, thanks for uh, coming to hang out, man. All right. Jared says, I started with a complete and slowly changed all the parts over to a custom frame. Oh, the custom frame was the last part. I started with a Fit Street 2018. Now I have a Sabrosa MR with all custom. That's the dream right there. If you guys are riding a complete bike right now, the cool thing, any complete, like even a kink launch, um, a lower end um, 
a lower end cult, lower end Sabrosa, whatever it is, lower end Sunday, those bikes are are fully customizable. So you guys can just slowly piece on high quality aftermarket parts. And over time, you're going to have a fully custom bike. So like you get some money for Christmas, boom, new bars, new forks, boom, new seat. And uh, that that's the coolest thing where BMX is right now. If you guys buy any like real brand, like, like a Walmart complete isn't going to be the same amount of customizability, but most bikes you can do that with. And that's really cool. Um, I think the four inch shouldn't be an issue, Asher. Uh, you could do four and a half, but you're probably talking about grinding on ledges. And if that's the case, then you're going to want to just get, get that balance figured out a little more because you should be just fine on the, uh, on the four inch pegs. All right. Jacob used empire once. It was really fast and he's halfway across the country. That's sick. My shipping is going to be faster. Uh, just kidding. I hope so, but I don't know, dude. I sell stuff on eBay sometimes, and like I have to make boxes and ship the stuff out, and I'm like, dude, this sucks. It's not very fun, like boxing stuff up, and oh my god. Um, okay, Marvin. What's up, Marvin? Marvin's back. He said, I watched your video on workouts, and I've been doing them a lot. Definitely see a difference already. Awesome. Isn't that crazy? I, this Monday... Um, I went to the gym, drove over to the gym, took some pre-workout like I'm ready to go. I got to the gym and it was closed. Um, our governor shut down like restaurants, gyms, all that stuff. So if you're able to get out and get in the gym, good work. Um, can you believe that that's my little brother? Like he's younger than me. He's jacked. It's crazy. Um, but you're really, you're going to see such a huge difference if you stick to it for like six months. Um, like the, the way this, this came from one of my friends in El Paso and over the last year, yeah, over the last year, I've watched him like turn from like, from like a skinny scrawny kid to like, he he's working out a lot and he looks just a lot bigger, but in that same timeline where he's, he's progressing his body, he's getting stronger. He can 540 bar spin. He can 720. He can three whip. Like he learned all those tricks in like a three month period after he got stronger. And I was like, this is weird. And so like all through high school, I hit the gym and I was able to do those tricks. And so like I started looking at it more and more. And I was like, anyone who really focuses on different muscles externally, so not from riding bike, they have a lot easier time. Like, like Stevie Churchill, you can't tell me that Stevie back in the day didn't hit the gym. And uh, yeah, that's crazy. So good. I'm happy for you, Marvin. Hope you get super jacked, learn three whips and all that stuff. Elias says, what chainstay do I ride? I'd have to double check. I want to say it's a 13.2. I'm riding a Colony Sweet Tooth frame right now. It's a 21 inch. Um, it's a it's a good old frame. It's yeah, 13.25. So it was weird because that that really short frame I was talking about was a a total a total hangover frame, and it was it was a 12.7. So then going back to the 13.2, I was like, wow, this is crazy. Now I couldn't 540 as easy. Uh, and so like, those are those trade-offs that you, you have to get used to. Bring the heat. You found it. You found my channel because you're trying to see what was wrong with your bike. Yeah. So, um, send me on Instagram, whatever's going on with your free coaster. I'll try and help you figure it out. Um, how would I rate the kink whip? The 2019 kink whip is, uh, it's like, if you imagine a line, okay, this is the line, this is my water, but this is beginner, okay, this is mid-level, and then this is high level, right? So like in mid-level, there's a section in between mid and high level where it's still technically mid-level. I'd say the kink whip is like right after being mid-level. Um, it So it has, when I, when I categorize a bike as mid-level, I go based off of 
full chromoly, double wall rims, and sealed bearings for the most part. Because I feel like those are some of the basic things you need to withstand to like mid-level tricks. Um, and so the kink whip has that. Now the kink whip doesn't have any extra added quality like aftermarket parts um, or like, like the kink switch has the pegs and the free coaster and just some added goodies there. Uh, the whip doesn't have that, but it's still a mid-level quality bike because it has the chromoly and the double wall rims. All right, that's the info I got about the Envy from the website. Good job, Salvador. Always support the BMX homies. Um, if you're asking me if I ride brakes, I don't ride brakes. I rode brakes way back when uh, when I first started, like on that DK bike I talk about. And, oh, Buck, you're wild. Um, so I had brakes at first. And one thing I noticed is before every single trick, I'd pull the brakes for no reason. I just do it before a trick. And uh, it's a thing like with my head, I always try to mentally rely on something and that was it for me. So, so the brakes were like my mental crutch and I just pull it for no reason. Uh, and so I was like, you know what, to actually gain bike control, I'm gonna take these off. So I took them off and well, then I couldn't pull the brakes before the trick. So that ended that habit real quick, but Brakes are interesting because like for real tech park riding, they help a lot. Like if you air really high, you rip a brake, it drops your front wheel. Um, if you kick a tail whip and you rip the brake, it stops the back wheel. And that goes with that rotational weight I talked with on the back video. The wheel's not spinning, so it doesn't slow down the whip. And it's going to really help out with a bunch of different tricks. Um, but I don't know. People at this point are able to ride at a really high level without them. The only thing, man, I, I went, oh, we're at an hour already. Um, all right, I'm gonna finish these stories and answer these last few questions. But one time I went to a trip, I went on a trip to Denver with some friends and we went to a dirt park. So they had like, they had trails and then they had a downhill section, mostly for mountain bike. Um, but my friends, we're on BMX, they had brakes, and they're like, hey, come do this with us. And I'm like, okay, okay, whatever. Uh, you know, I was young and confident. And so I, I went over there with them, and we roll in. They, he's like, just follow me. I said, whatever. So we roll in off this drop-in, and I'm like, all right, all right. So I'm going. Like, we hit the first jump. It's all good. And they're like, they're long and low jumps. So, so we're going fast. We're going super fast. It's crazy. And I hit the second one <laughs> and I land back heavy on it. And um, so I land back heavy. I try to run it out. I jump off my bike. I take two steps and I just slam. And uh, dude, my arm like all the way down here, my shoulder, my side, everything was just like the worst road rash possible. And uh, <laughs> so the, the moral of that story, if I had brakes, I could pull the brakes, drop the front end, and I would have been just fine on there. So never, I've been to that park uh, two different times since then, and I never touched the downhill section because I don't have brakes. I'm like, no way, man. That was the worst experience ever. Buck bought a Soundwave Complete and started BMX last month. So here's the thing, Buck. I really, I think that's good. So in a lot of my reviews, I don't recommend the high-end bikes to people. But the reason that is is because not many people actually stick to the sport long enough. Uh, so I was telling Asher's dad that not many kids get to the level where they're breaking parts like that. Like a lot of them kind of get in, they ride a little bit, and then they quit um, before they progress enough to actually ride. And BMX has a really steep learning curve. It goes like this. Once you hit, hit the curve, most people quit. But after, if you progress through that, that little bit of resistance where it's really hard, you're able to, you just progress so much faster. Um, so if you think you're going to stick to BMX for a long time, uh, you have dreams of like really progressing, the Soundway is a great bike for you because you don't want to get a beginner level bike, break it, get a mid-level bike, break it, get a high level bike, break it, and then eventually get a fully custom bike. If you plan to stick it out, you plan to ride for a while, the Soundwave, like, that's the right choice. 
Now, if you're just riding to hang out with your friends, uh, you're going to get a car and a girlfriend and quit BMX pretty soon. The sound wave was a very bad choice. So I hope you keep riding. I hope in like five years, old, owning my bike shop, and you'll be like, what's up, man? I'll be like, yo. All right, brakes slow you down, take them off, and you'll start full setting better. <laughs> amen. Can I get an amen for Jacob? Amen. All right. Buck has never rode a bike without brakes, but you just took them off after a month, and it feels so normal. Yeah, that's good, man. Um, so, see, that's the thing, like I was talking about, is, is people rely on different things. And to like get real spiritual and like really actually be one with your bike and like, I don't know. So, so there's a thing called flow state. And it's like in between um, going through a difficult task and like you need to be in that perfect state where it's challenging enough mentally, but it's not too challenging and you can get into the flow state. So with us, that's the adrenaline we seek when we're riding bikes is we seek to get into that flow state. And it's just like where time passes and you don't even notice because you're so concentrated. And um, now, oh God, where was I even going with that? <laughs> oh, oh, okay. So your brakes, they like, they're just a distraction to that, right? So to really be one with your bike, you need to get in there and um, like not not let anything else pull you away from it. Like you need to be fully connected. So your brakes separate that. Your brakes allow you to use something other than your body weight, other than your momentum, yada, yada, yada. They use something other than that to like, to change the way you're riding. And I don't think that's particularly fun. Now, if you're riding on a really busy street, you should have brakes. I fully recommend brakes. Um, but yeah, okay, let's see. Jared is old. That's why I run them. They will help you not fall. No brakes means you hit the ground way harder. Nothing to stop your momentum. So be careful. Yeah. See, like I said, if you guys are riding something dangerous or like those big dirt jumps, like I'm saying, brakes to a certain extent are very necessary. All right. We got we got four amens in the chat for Jacob. Good job, guys. Um, Buck doesn't even ride pegs, but you landed a 180 fakie. So you learned that in like a, a week of riding. That's that's awesome. Um I learned fakies by driving into my mom in the back of my mom's car and then it would like stop my front wheel and then I'd pull back and try and fakie. She didn't like it very much, but uh, that's how I learned fakies. Dunt, Dunt the man. Who even is that? You've got the moderator. So Dante, Dunt. Dun I'm going to call you Dante. I know that's not your name. I have a friend named Dante. Um, Don the man. Oh, Dan the man. God, good job, Buck. You know what, Buck? Hold on. Buck, you get the moderator too. There you go. You got your new, you got a wrench next to your name. Um, okay, Dan the man, what's up, man? Uh, I was telling that story earlier about the last time you and Elias were in here, and I asked you guys if you guys like pancakes or waffles, and then the guy that said pancakes, uh, <laughs> the guy that said pancakes lost his moderator, and it was a sad day for him. But all right. Yeah, Buck, you're part of the crew with the moderator. Let's see. I'm going to give Marvin one, too. I like you guys. Um, Marvin. Oh, I could put Marvin in timeout. Should I do that? No, no, no. We'll give him moderator. I'll give all you guys. You guys are fun. All right. So next Friday, guys, I'm going to do this again. Uh, have some questions for me. If you guys want to talk about how to do certain tricks, uh, I can definitely try and help you out with that if it's something you're stuck on. And uh, bike questions, whatever it may be, uh, bring the heat out in Japan. Stay safe out there, man. You guys are awesome. Yeah, so every Friday I'm going to do this. After this, I'll set one for next Friday. It'll be on my channel. You can go over and get uh, get notified when I go live. Yeah, so, so yeah, every Friday, guys, I'll come do this. I need something to... Um, something to do. I get so bored. Like, I sold my PlayStation... I told myself I can't play video games until I get my website successful. But uh, yo, Salvador's in Japan. Bring the heat. He's a uh, he's military. He's stationed somewhere in Japan. That's cool. We got two guys from Japan. What's hey? What's uh? What's it like with Corona over there, Salvador? Is it crazy? Mm. 
Oh, Salvador, I'll give you the check mark. John, you got to be careful, man. <laughs> That's funny. All right. Oh, 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 there we go. No government is promoting travel. Interesting. Um, yeah, I'm going to hopefully. So, like, I'm in New Mexico and, and, uh, they we just went on like another real strict lockdown and it's not very fun but hopefully i'll be able to head over to california in two weeks and i'm working on a big project guys uh i'm, I'm really excited to tell you guys about it and uh yo i'm in las cruces salvador nms use my, my my college right now that's crazy uh buck i'm gonna be it's lancaster area so yeah, if any of you guys are around LA, Lancaster, um, I'll talk about it a little more in my live and we can uh, we can link up. You can come hang out with me and my friend Nick and we're working on this huge project. I'm gonna tell you guys more about it in these upcoming weeks, but you gotta keep it a secret. Uh, it's real. It's gonna be crazy though. Real excited for it. Yeah, dude, Las Cruces. You like the skate park there? Have you ever been? Salvador? Haggies for life. All right, guys. I'm going to go. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I'll go to Sonic and get some ice cream. I don't know what I'm going to do yet. But this has been super fun, guys. Thanks for hanging out with me. Uh, we'll see you next Friday. And email me if you guys have any other questions. Until then, okay? Have a good day, guys.